Yo, what's up, y'all? What's up, Square Pen Brigade? On this episode, we have the great and funny and good friend of mine, Roy Woods Jr. Um, we talk about gambling and cheating, video games, um, responsibilities to cheating, and understanding uh, how to be petty. Sometimes we talked a little bit about that. Um, oh, plus uh, on the plus on the Patreon, uh, the Patreon is really exceptionally good because Roy tells a couple. We have some revenge stories, and Roy tells a really good revenge story that I did not see coming. <laughs> and uh, it, it, that one is just a fun one to shit. So if you want to go over, a great way to support the show is uh, man uh, patreon.com slash manschool202. If you subscribe, we're doing, you know, listener mail. Uh, we're doing bonus content. So uh, it really helps us out. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. And I am excited. We got a special guest today, and I say that I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. Um, Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? I am ready to rock and roll. Uh, I'm I'm full of energy, yeah. full of COVID. I think. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, well that's see. energy. That's what they call energy <laughs> now. It's COVID. They got something. It's something yeah. going around here. Yeah, it's something. I'm all right, but my girl is my girl's been laid up. She's she's in rough shape. It's been four days. It's because she's COVID. She's COVID. You know what I mean? She she got the COVID in her. I feel like you put it in her. I put you know, something in her, but I, can't, I don't know you can't if it's COVID. COVID. Nah, maybe not. If you could uh, catch it that way, we're fucked. Well, uh, let me give it. Let me. Uh, I'm a raw dog. <laughs> you get some stink on your hang down every yeah. once in a while. You know what I mean? I like saying I'm uh, a raw dog. Yeah, I uh, did. I just mute this or no? No, I can hear, can hear you. Hear me? I can hear you. Mine. Real professional setup we got here, Roy. This is this doesn't always happen. I swear to God, this is not uh, what we do every fucking week. Why would we do this uh, every week if fucking, this is what it was, Roy? I'm yeah, sorry. the fucking microphone was on the keyboard. That's why I kept turning it down. Anyway, okay. Uh, yo, let me take this time to introduce our guest, special guest, good friend of mine. Um, been, a, been killing it all over the fucking country and doing his thing. Uh, really, really enjoy watching this dude on stage. Uh, and we're gonna get into it today. Give it up for my boy, uh, Roy Wood Jr., y'all. Give it up, yeah, yeah, man. What's going on, Roy? You good, yeah, man? I'm good, man. I ain't got no complaints, no complaints, yeah. just over here being a father, trying to write a script or two in between that. and Okay. Reconnect with my PlayStation, you know. Okay, all right, cool. Yeah. That's cool. Me and the PlayStation, you know, we we grew we grew apart for a little and, while. Hey, back in, you want to put a little more time in since the Omarion, the Omarion <laughs> is back. <laughs> so one of your yeah, things. So for you, Roy, you're like, you know what? I got to make the most of this time. I got to get a. I know I have a five year old, but my number one goal is I got to get back together with this so PlayStation. Like, yeah, I done fell off on all my games. Motherfuckers whooping my ass online. I was like, this is not the business. What what happened? Like me and the kid are good. We, yeah. we <laughs> build and bond, but yeah. fuck around trying to play one of these Nintendo Switches, and then I didn't found a website where you can play old school Sega Genesis games. Oh online. wow! Uh, okay, so see right, now you're dog, talking these emulators and shit. And John Madden died. I played Madden '93 uh -huh. for like a day and a half. The old school Sega joint. Yeah, but yeah. you're playing it like and, and like like then you're playing the game with a playstation controller so you uh -huh. still gotta learn to learn the you button. Learn you, the you buttons. Yeah, and yeah. see and i played them complicated ass playstation games where it take a day and a half to learn how to play the game again yeah yeah, hmm. yeah so yeah. you can get back into it because you know these games man it's too many fucking buttons now we need to go back to that two button nintendo joint i never well you remember the atari was a one button and a stick Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, you old oh, yeah. yeah! one button and a stick, but yeah, uh, that one just, button did forty different things. Yeah, I did the uh, what you call it? Uh, I bought the Oculus and it was faulty for Christmas. Oh yeah, no! I, I got one. I haven't had a chance to really delve into it. I be playing online poker on it. Somebody yeah. called me a nigga at the table, 
And oh, I don't yes. know. I don't know why that was the funniest shit. To me. What hilarious. button is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a secret button. It's A B up yeah. down up down B right oh, trigger. Man. You gotta hit this the N I N I. You're like what? What code this is this? Call me a nigga. I gave him the middle finger, oh. and then everybody at the table voted me away from the table. What? Yeah, really? I was like, what the fuck did I do? Wow. I'm guessing this was Texas Hold'em. Yeah, it's all, what in, it was. In Texas. In Texas. <laughs> really, Texas Hold'em? <laughs> what it was was that I, I was taking too long to play, and they were getting annoyed. Uh. But you get 60 seconds. Right. To, not even 60. It's like 20 seconds. It's not a long time. Uh-huh. Right. But they was like, motherfucker, hurry up. Hurry up. And I'm like, bitch, I get 20 seconds to decide. Come right. on, nigga. And, and, and like for poker players, you would rather like someone being taking too long to play is worse than a racist being at the table. Really? Absolutely. Really? And, and I get it. I, like, if I'm in a rush, I don't nobody want to play poker with a bunch of motherfuckers thinking it. It's fake money. It's yeah. it's Oculus poker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like, like twenty dollars. It's not fake money, but it's like twenty dollars gets you like forty thousand gajillion billion okay. credits. You know, it's monopoly money. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, what the fuck are we doing here, man? Hurry up. Is that a is that a thing though? Like in general, it's just not you got to play fast, or is that they you, wouldn't? I don't think niggas would size you up like that in real life. No, in real life with real money, you're not gonna rush me. But yeah. in real life, I think you also get a minute to decide. Yeah. And, but that can drag games on, and it's harder to make your money back if you down. So I get it. But the dude didn't have to call it's, me. This is nigga. this is where we at. This is where we at in terms of how abu- what how we are abused in this country where you go listen i did take long he called me a nigga i get it like it's like we're literally at a point where we got eh, come on yeah i was yeah. being a nigga kind of it, it's like <laughs> all right fine it's the internet there's racism I, and i make my own avi i could have made myself green or some yeah. non nigga color but i yeah. chose to be a nigga in right. the vr world right 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 well, <laughs> so you going to get some you going to catch some strays that's that's interesting that we you know we don't want to we don't want to be nothing else never no aliens. We don't want to be purple. We don't want nothing. We don't want the avatar we pick. The avatar you pick is probably you. This like you right now <laughs> in the yellow hoodie. <laughs> I'm good with me. I'm good with me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm comfortable with how I look. So you, you play uh you play poker a lot. I'm not a serious, but it's a stress relief. It's no yeah. different than video games, jigsaw puzzles, Sudoku. Anything yeah. where my brain has to turn on and it mm-hmm. pushes every other thought out of my head. Okay. So I try to play cheaper. Uh-huh. One, two, hold them, two, three, you know, shit like that, where the smokers are, where the sad people are, five dollar okay. blackjack, like that type <laughs> of shit. Like for real, like that's where like so when I started stand up, you know I'm a down south nigga. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. What where, where, so, where are you from down south? I'm from Birmingham. Okay. And so stand up in the South, every night you're in a different city. This open mic, multiple club shit, that mm-hmm. didn't exist anywhere but maybe Atlanta mm-hmm. and Tampa-ish. Right. Like that Tampa, St. Pete, Gulf Coast yeah, yeah, side. Yeah, 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 you yeah, you, yeah, you get co- in a couple nights in one week uh-huh. doing open mic. Otherwise, you travel. So the casinos along the Gulf, you know, Biloxi, Mobile, New Orleans, you could get in a lot of work there. So I'd I'd perform and then I would go and do like five dollar blackjack or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just that's just you where, yeah. and it was chill. And like that's just where you meet regular motherfuckers, bro. And like yeah. if you just want to just take the temperature of the country, play go to a casino and play table games right. at the table minimums. Right. And you will fucking meet America like in a fucking heartbeat. They got dollar blackjack in uh, uh, Vegas. It'd be a fucking 45 minute line just to right. get to the table. Really? You know? Yeah. So I like I like poker more for that reason. You yeah. know, like I 
I know the strategy, you know, but I'm also the nigga that plays blackjack who doesn't obey every rule that the, well, when the dealer shows four, but you have a two, you're supposed to fuck that. I'm playing yeah. to win this time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. people get mad at you. So, you know, I'm that guy some nights, but yeah. so you play like just it. for, for fun and stress relief. You, you don't want to, you're not in it for the, the money haul. Cause that's, fuck that no. can be stressful. It, it, yeah, I can't stand to play with people who aren't there for the money. Right. Haul. Yeah. Like, Oh dude. By LAX, they tore it down to build a new um, Rams stadium. But mm -hmm. Hollywood Park Casino, yeah, on Century, that used to be the lick, bro. I would land from a red eye at like six in the morning in LA, and then I would just go straight to the casino for like three hours because I didn't want to go home. Really? And just I, man, I've never been able to get out. Like I, I, you know, we used to play CeeLo in Brooklyn. And um, when I was young, when I was young, but I was a little wild motherfucker. So I was rolling dice and I would lose and I'd be like, nah, nah, we got to do that over. And they were like, <laughs> no. And they, and they would they wouldn't kind of they kind of wouldn't stop me because I was a little wild dude. And my <laughs> my uncle said to me, look, if you can't gamble and lose, don't gamble. He said, "Cause motherfuckers gonna kill you if you keep you if you don't have the, the gambling. It's about losing. It, I mean, you got to be willing to lose. And I I don't gamble. I don't even play lotto. Really, I don't play nothing. I flirt with that. Yeah. You know, if the, like right now there was a jackpot that was like four hundred million. All right, motherfucker, give me four dollars. Yeah, yeah, I'll do, <laughs> yeah. I'll do that. I'll do that." I'll and even that. then, it's a pick 'em. I ain't sitting there yeah, yeah, choosing. Oh, my grandmother <laughs> was seventy-one when she died, <laughs> and plus my birthday. No, oh, man, just you know what it is. What, what happens is you, you see the little thing that says four hundred million, and then you you instinctually like, I know I can't win that, but then you can't walk away because now yeah. you know. What if I didn't uh, put it what in? What if I didn't put it in? Now, uh, Listen, now I'm gonna the, feel like an asshole. It's yeah. like at work whenever they do. I I never do the lottery. But if, but if anyone they, if they, if they take they a collection, in, you got it. I'm gotta absolutely put it. chipping it because I'm not going to be the asshole on the side while they're doing that press conference with the giant check <laughs> in the cafeteria. <laughs> and and I still sue. got my work hat on, <laughs> my safety vest on while everyone else is collecting money. I set you know, the cap at 300 for the year. Once I'm down 300 across the board in all gambling capacities. Oh, wow. Down. OK, so I really be, feel like only person that's going to ever only comics that's ever going to win. Uh, the, the 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 lotto is is Tracy Morgan. He'll hit it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to be spiteful. <laughs> right. just, I That's won just it God's twice. Joke. I went in my Lamborghini to pick up my lottery check. <laughs> 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 like there's, it, it's to me, it's all, it's also an adrenaline rush. Yeah, gambling, which is something that I've identified that that's one of my fucking yeah. That's one of my things, you know, I ain't no cocaine, nigga, I ain't no weed, nigga, but you know, if you can figure out, that, that's really, comedy checks that box enough well, yeah, yeah, that I yeah. don't have to wild out, Yeah, yeah. but yeah, fuck it, let me put $300 on, like, like if I play blackjack for no reason, I and I win a hand, I'll just keep doubling the winnings for five yeah. straight hands. Okay. J just... Fuck just to it. see what happens yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's the it, it, but again it's five dollar minimum so at this point it's oh he's got seven dollars on the table <laughs> but to Does people table betting real five dollars at, at a time they're yeah, like this they... nigga's crazy <laughs> so you're like the james bond of the five dollar table <laughs> in the... Austin power. <laughs> i also like to live dangerously <laughs> Roy, Roy is at a, a two dollar baccarat table yeah. with a tuxedo, <laughs> with a white tuxedo <laughs> and an eye patch. He's got a white tuxedo and an eye patch. He goes, Let me yeah. have a large full loco. <laughs> it's just it's one of the few times that that I get to just have regular conversations with strangers that in public transit, you know, yeah. But public transit, it's very much more high and by. But like, if you really want to just take the temperature of just America in general, yeah, yeah, play a table game on an on a weeknight because right, that's right. when the fucking that's, that's the when they play for real. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're not coming on the weekend. <laughs> this is what we do. I got off work and I came here. <laughs> yeah, I, I still yeah. got my my name tag on my on my shirt. Uh, like, or, yeah. or worse, I'm starting my overnight shift. I came before work. <laughs> yeah, so I can I still got my money. janitor's uniform on. <laughs> I got, my, lunch, the, I got my lunch with me. What's the strangest <laughs> thing you found out or the most interesting thing you found out from checking that temperature with people? 
while I you're mean, doing lottery. there's a there's a lot of people down bad on the health side of the game. Also, there's a lot of people where it's some table minimums, but low key like that shit is life or death for them. Like this little well, twenty dollars, they trying to live. Off yeah, that, I'm off trying this to flip. Whip. I'm trying uh, to flip this shit. So you know, you you understand the base level shit that people are concerned with. Like if you yeah. play, put it this way. I used to play, shout out to Penguins in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, mm. where like, no, no, in Davenport, it's in Davenport. Mm. There's like a bunch of, there's a, no, this is in, in Iowa. Iowa. This, okay, yeah, like Iowa. Up, up and down the Mississippi, there's a bunch of shitty casinos. Mm. Like there, when you think about the Mississippi River, other than St. Louis and Memphis, there's no real major cities that mm. are just sitting. It's all just small town factory, blue collar fucking places and shit. Yeah, yeah. And I was there and just playing like on a Sunday afternoon. And there's just a dude in there that was like up $180. And then he lost it. He fucking lost it in like four hands. And the nigga lost it and he sat there for like five more hands processing that he lost his hundred. That he lost $180. Wow. And I'm like, God damn, man, I need to leave because this nigga might come back and murder everybody. <laughs> like, he had shoot up the place energy. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, oh, fuck. But, you know, you start finding out, you know, that's really where you find out a lot about relationships and shit. Yeah. Truth be it, told, because like niggas what? share, they'll share. You what know, do they share? I can't, I can't explain it, man. You share, you quicker to share with a stranger. Then you are your people. I'm not because there's no again. no judgment, no judgment. You know, yeah. Bitch Man. took this and took that. Ain't no sense in there. I'm gonna fucking stay here another fucking hour. Yeah, and I got damn cut my fucking benefits and fucking Larry and because he knows two other people at the table. So you listening? You just irregular. He's dropping on crosstalk and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a weird thing and and uh, in terms of relationships when you talk about relationships and. And and regular dudes going to work and and going to casinos and you know and where one hundred and eighty dollars means nothing. It's it's also interesting to me that the stories are the same no matter how much the money is involved. You know what I mean? I mean it's nobody's. T- yeah, I mean you you talk about you talk about somebody who's rich who gets taken for ten million, or I won't say taken for ten million, but they divorce and then it's ten million. She gets sent ten million a year or whatever the fuck it is. But that that hundred and eighty is the same as the ten million of them. It's the same. Right. Everybody's living that same kind of thing. Um, and kind of what what I find more than anything, it's um. The, the thing that gets you um, really in control of of whether or not you how these things affect you, how relationships affect you, because I know you you're, you got a five year old, right? You yep. you with your girl or you you're married or you're just together? We do, we're together. We're together. Yeah. yeah. Been together the whole run. How long? How long has that been? Uh, about seven years. Yeah. 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 Somewhere in that ballpark. So like that, that's probably been one of the most stable parts of my life. Really? You know? Really? Yeah. Cause I was, I was wild in my twenties and yeah. early well, 30s, as you, bro. as you should be though. And that's the time to get wild. That's the yeah. time to be wild. What were you and, doing? And so then just cheating, apologizing and cheating again, the usual <laughs> wash, rinse, repeat. But I'm uh, sorry, uh, baby. Could uh, you pull your dick out? Yeah. Well, before you apologize hey my bad oh shit i did it again my bad again <laughs> like that type of shit that you get old and you go damn i ain't even had to live the game like that yeah it was chicks who was who would have been with it yeah yeah i just needed to work harder to find them so you know that part or you could have asked yeah, i'll tell you something else sometimes it's just a matter of asking yeah it, you 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 just the assumption is that ain't nobody going to pull off, pull this off. But the problem is growing up a Southern Baptist, you're sold that monogamy is the way, the truth and the only way. So this idea of juggling chicks, especially if you haven't come from a world socially, mm-hmm. like no one in my social circle was really like that. Even in college, most of the niggas that I ran with yeah. was monogamous and then they had something on the side, but they yeah. never, I never had the 
the Bill Bellamy, D. Ray Davis ass nigga uh-huh. who would just walk in with three chicks and we're all together. Yeah, yeah. Table yeah. for four, please. Yeah. Like, I ain't never seen no shit like that before right. in my life on a regular basis. So you end up with arguing and apologizing getting caught and then having to do the maintenance of trying to rebuild or letting that go and then building something new so something else that you're gonna fuck up again so as my career started growing i became a little bit more workaholic ish Uh and i probably still am to a degree now to a point where just juggling just ain't efficient for my timetable yeah 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 yeah. it's just not and so now the only other way you're gonna catch some pussy on the side is that it's got to be something quick and easy and something that easy. something that falls in your lap you in yes. the elevator and somebody starts sucking your dick and nothing's free bro <laughs> yeah nothing's free and that's the type of pussy you can't trust once you at a certain altitude career yeah. wise yeah oh. yeah 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 so it, the type of chick that you need to be fucking with you really can't fuck with and you don't have the time and yeah you like it's a part-time uh, job man it's a part-time yeah. job to get it right yeah and yeah. so then it's, oh, come, I bet you all the women be at you after the show, even if they were. Bitch, I got to, this, I'm away from my son for two days. I get yeah. to sleep. Yeah. I get to mm-hmm. fucking sleep, and then I get to write uninterrupted. Like, I. You appreciate like, that quiet time more than you're anything. You're going yeah. to make me do a song and dance that will last about five to six hours cumulatively. If we're just uh, basing this on, and, and this is just on some, we ain't even getting into morality yet. I'm yeah, just yeah, yeah. on the efficiency yeah, yeah, yeah. of it. After the show, we have to go to a bar. That's two fucking hours, maybe three. Then we get to fuck. That's another hour. Sleep, get up in the morning, and then maybe fuck again. And then it's three hours of fucking some stupid breakfast. Yeah. With you in my space. And me not being mentally settled because you're in my fucking space. Right, right. And then you're watching. And I don't know if I want you there. Yeah. And then are you going to come back the next night and leave me the fuck alone? Like it it just stuff that made perfect sense and was fine at fucking 20. The aggravation. The aggravation. 33, but my nigga, I'm 43. Yeah. Also, you just don't have the energy as far as time goes. Like not just as you get older. I just don't have the energy to do all that shit. You're you need that sleep just in general. Like, yeah, it really is a better fucking situation. Yeah. Well, you know, I mental energy, too. There's just a lot of mental like, is this chick going to say something? Is this the type of chick who's going to who's going to make an accusation later on? Is she nuts? Is she going to try to steal my shit? Yeah, we don't even have to get to that yet. Yeah, yeah. I'm just bitch. I'm busy. Go home. Yeah. Then it's. Oh, you can't stop him. Are you going to fucking rob? Are you going to kick door? Then after that, it's, well, morally, I shouldn't be fucking. Like, would most people be like, oh, well, that should be the first thing. I guess. But it don't matter as long as you ain't doing it. Just it it, does. Why fucking matter? Because I know niggas who getting robbed. Yeah. I know niggas who didn't got the fucking door kicked in. Yeah. 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 Especially especially in a casino. Yeah, I'm talking comedians. Yeah, oh really? I'm sure you know the stories. Like, the, I know niggas who have a second bedroom, and that's the room where they fuck chicks. Uh huh. Jesus Christ, that's so much money. And then and when you're done, and then when you're done, but I mean, but at that point, it's an investment. If you know you're getting just dropped, suck my dick on an elevator, instantaneous brown and serve, as we call it. <laughs> right, right. If you're getting brown and serve pussy. <laughs> Then, yeah, maybe it's a wise investment to have a second hotel room so she can't steal your shit while y'all sleep. And well, you know, morning, it's a it's you a go to your real room. Yeah, it, it's also kind of a thing, though, when you start to um, when you really start get like what you're talking about is I I need some sleep. I need uh, so I want some time to be creative and to write. I need time. I want I don't want you in my space. All of those things speak to how much you think your personal value is like you about what you got to do not about how bad this chick is and how we 
how are we gonna how am I gonna get this? Like it's an objective. I I you know, I, I don't know you I don't know if you know this word, but I do consultations here and there. I do the, like one-on-one phone consultations. So a dude okay. could have a have a problem and call me up, just go to DanteNever.com, click on consult, and you can talk to me. And I, I, it's funny, I just had a call from a kid today. I, he couldn't have been more than 20-something. He's like, Dante, I got this date. It's this girl. I met her. But he's feeling, he's really excited because he, he, had, excited. he had a problem. You know, he had, you know, I was working with him before he kind of had a lot of approach anxiety. And he gets this girl. She's really cute. And we're going to take out. And I just wanted to call you before. And I was like, you're going to blow this anyway. And he was like, what? I go, you you already fucked up. I said, because you you have put this chick on a pedestal in a way that you really you don't even know if she deserves. I'm not saying that you can't find some bad chick, the one or whatever. I mean, I don't know if that exists, but but the fact that I said I said you approached her. He said, yes, I go. And you you got the uh you got the reservation for the restaurant. Yeah. He goes, yes. And then you're going to pick her up. Yeah. I go, are you going to pay? Yeah. He goes, I go. So what did she contribute in the course of that whole process? He goes, Oh, well, I mean, she, she's hot. I go, I go, what did she personally contribute to this social engagement? He was like, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. I go, no, no, I need an answer. He goes, Nothing. I go, okay. She's attractive. He goes, yeah. I go, well, how did she get attractive? What did she do to become attractive? (laughs) She just showed the fuck up attractive. I go, do you know if she's a thief? I go, you don't even know if a pussy might smell like hot dog water. You you have no, you have put this whole idea of what her value is simply because of this interaction. And I said, I you have to understand on a base level that when you value yourself, your time is important. Um, and your assumption is that because she's attractive, that she has value, which she might not have value. I don't care relationships and 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 relationships whatever level that is none of it is unconditional you know i i'm i'm willing to do this because i think you are this bad you know uh so i'm willing to whereas if you got a lady she got to kick in right something gotta happen something what am i gotta kick in yeah i go you do you know if she's interesting i said she's funny I, i don't know i just met her and i got we exchanged numbers I go, I go, so she's contributed nothing. I go, I tell you really, honestly, I tell young dudes all the time, even if, even if she fucks you out the gate, you've never met a girl that fucks you longer than you fuck her. So even on the energy you expend in this, in this sexual engagement, you lose in that as well. You 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 gotta work hard, you gotta perform the pressure on is for you to she can lay back and starfish and it won't it won't even matter. You know, so we're literally in a situation where uh, this young dude believed that this girl's literal existence is has value. Has yeah, value over everything. Now, I mean, he's he's approached her, he's dealt with certain fears and, and anxiety about you know his own insecurity. So he's surpassed that. He set up a uh he got a you know, he got to detail the car now, he gotta gas it up, he gotta pay for parking, he on and on and on. And she has not contributed anything. And she's going to sit there and sit up like she's the queen with the thumb. You know, it'll be thumbs up or thumbs down (laughs) when it's all done. I think what he has to figure out is I just look at that. It took playing NCAA football for PlayStation 3 for me to kind of (laughs) understand. Oh, boy. Dating. This might even be bad PlayStation 2. Right. You bullshitting. You had to recruit players during the off season, and during like the season mode, like correct the, when you run the, yeah. the dynasty mode or whatever. Yeah, you're yeah. the head coach, right? So you play with whatever regular you play the game, do the championship, you win the championship, you don't, and then you have to go and visit high school students. This is within the game for the people who've never played it. It's fantastic. And you have to actually recruit the players, and right. the level of aggressiveness with which you recruit 
dictates the type of players you get back on your squad to dictate right. whether or not you can win again. So right. the game gives you options on how to recruit. And this is real shit. You could send a letter. You could send an assistant coach. Right. You could make a phone call. Or you, the head coach, could go yourself. Go. Right. And of course, each level dictates whether or not what the whether player you get the, you, yeah, yeah. And you can't burn head coach coupons on everybody. So you right, gotta right. use them real wisely right, right. on recruits that you think this much. Right, and you right, can right. look at the recruit and see if he shows interest. You know, he wants to play in the Southern school at wide receiver. Oh, I need a wide receiver, motherfucker, head coach. Uh -huh. So this date for this guy with this girl, he's going full head coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going bells and whistles. <laughs> he's, going hell he's getting her to visit the campus. Yeah. The whole nine. And that doesn't mean that she won't be worthwhile at right, some right. point. But you you're but going into not. it no but but until that's what I'm saying. So that brings me back to the point. Yeah. You're going into it knowing very little about this recruit. Right. You don't know if she wants to play wide receiver at a Southern school. Uh huh. You just sending the head coach out the gate because you know she's a five star recruit. Right. 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 So right, right. there's so to everything that you're talking about. Maybe some of that stuff could have been ascertained in phone calls. Maybe that could have been ascertained in some chit chat. But then you also don't know. You know, there's some women that want to talk on the phone a little bit before a first date, and then there's some yeah. who know, nigga, let's go out. Let's yeah. Let me see what. Let me get a vibe, but we'll see what you, you about. Have coffee and my undivided attention for an hour. Go. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then there's ones that want want you to spend two hundred off the rip. Yeah, yeah. You still get yeah. my undivided, but it's gonna cost you a little more. But yeah, all that, I, so, it, all those are also indicators of what that person is too. Yeah, yeah, the whole yeah. thing is indicators, how they react, how they, how they dress, how they, all of it is indicators. The behavior, the expectations. Yeah, the bar that's set at what mile marker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can know yeah, if you, you want two hundred on the rip, that. if you want two hundred on the rip, and you haven't, you haven't invested anything. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm already good. Not because I won't, because I I might spend two hundred on the rip. Any, I mean, like you know, like Harry tell you, if him and I go out, it, it like I'm I'm Dante getting, takes care of all of it. Refuses yeah, to accept payment. The best I could do is sometimes I go, let me get the tip at least, and he, and he reluctantly gives me that. But Don, I had to explain to Dante what a Groupon is. He goes, "What are you talking about? I've never heard that word." <laughs> I it, it's just it's a it's a weird thing because you know I'm getting the tomahawk steak. I'm definitely getting the tomahawk steak. And so but if I live like that, and this is something I was telling Harry for years, I like if I live like that anyway, and then you as a woman who happens to be, you know, this is company. I'm 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 bringing you on as company. Along for the ride. Mm -hmm. You you're just along for the ride. This yeah. is this is not, I'm not doing this for you. This is this is how I live anyway. To the same token, um, I remember this back in the days. I mean, Tony, Tony, um, Tony Oops. Rock, Sorry. Tony Rock was when he first started doing comedy, right? And he was like, uh, he was outside the cellar. He was like, "Yo, man, y'all don't do. Look, this is what I do. This when he first was on the grind. Like Tony was on the grind in the beginning, right? Yeah. And he was like, "You want to hang out with me? You could come here." watch me perform then we can grab a bite to eat and if you want to come back and, and bone we can bone but this is this is happening and and you get to be part of which to be real honest it's a i mean a lot of times we take for granted Roy how great our life is as a comic the, the people that we hang out the fun that we have the the conversations the the, the interactions that we have on a day-to-day -day basis on a, on a slow tuesday you can yeah. hang out with three comics that you don't even know and it'd be the greatest time ever. And then Wednesday, you could do it again with five other dudes. You know what I mean? Yep. Just straight round robin. Yeah. And and so it's like if you're living your life like that, but it's but I was like, this guy he's like this young kid. He's creating these airs because he's trying to meet whatever her value is. And he hasn't really assessed her value because he's a young dude. She's attractive. And all he thinks, all he thinks, he thinks getting sex is the most important thing. It takes time to get to that point where you're talking about where you're 43 years old and you're going, my time is more important than your attractiveness. Yeah. I mean, but you know, 
much like to bring it back to the game, it could be a recruit that's not interested, but you could send a letter and then you uh, check back in a week. Yeah. You do a phone yeah. call and check back in a week. Then you send yeah. the assistant coach and you check. And eventually that might be something that, you know, yeah. is worthwhile. Because, you know, what I will say though is that I think I think women are I think women to a degree also, if you have fine, gorgeous woman, you gotta be sick of going out with dumb niggas too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You gotta, like regardless of what bar you've set and it's ridiculous, you gotta be tired of just dealing with dummies. Yeah. And yeah. you gotta wanna just go out with somebody decent. So if it's worth trying to overspend initially or overextend, not overspend, overextend your efforts mm -hmm. and your money. I mean, fine. But I, I do think that there are people that are going to show a different window, you know, but I just think you do have to, you know, do like Tony Rock say, man, just set your boundaries. Go, that's what it is. That's what I am. Yeah. Either you're with it or you're not. And you will eliminate a lot of riffraff. Yeah. 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 You know, I, well, I, I, I find, I not only you know, you will, eliminate a lot of the riffraff but i think what also happens is what a what a what a woman would do for you doesn't mean she'll do it for somebody else you know correct so the girl little she'll 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 fuck on the first day for you and not fuck on the first day for me do you know what i mean it's 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 there's a there's a standard of it just like this guy you're going out for for you trying to do 300 dollars dinner or something like that it, there's a there's a standard that we're and I and what I find more than anything is you how does somebody know what your value is you tell them if they just met you how do they know you I mean unless I mean you know there's a to a certain extent they're gonna google you or like especially if you you on tv they're going you know there's a certain prestige to that but the person that you are you communicate that who you are as a person on, a, on in terms of the subtext it in and, and i and I, I say this a hundred, or over and over again there's a subtext to how you walk there's a subtext to how you talk the tone of your voice the cadence of your voice what you allow how you dress how you handle yourself how you approach what you will put up all of those things Energy, el yeah. elude to what you think your value is and women because they have to be aware of who they're dealing with because they don't want to get murdered um they they they're very good at reading it and cutting through the cutting through the the bullshit and and reading the subtext of well this guy's this this guy's that or whatever and being able to communicate the subtext is something um something i think that people don't understand yeah, I think I think that, you know, it takes also realizing how many ain't shit dudes are yeah. out there and how many that woman has met or gone out with before she met you. Yeah, yeah. She just motherfucking talk. I went out with a girl one time, nigga. She had a 40 question worksheet. Really? And she went down the 40 questions. She emailed me. Really? fucking word document with really what year was this how was, long ago was this i'm not gonna put a year on it oh, <laughs> oh, fair the statue it, of limitations, limitations. it wasn't not. it wasn't it wasn't the current it wasn't okay. the current but at the time i was like you know what fuck it and you filled and it out it, yeah i was like this if this makes you feel comfortable going this is new this uh, is definitely new and it was like, all right, if this is how you process shit, and it ended up being okay. What was the question? Yeah, what were some of the being, questions? As, how do you, the, your faith, and do you want kids, and just all of the usual. She listened to Steve Harvey. She was reading Steve so Harvey's, Steve Harvey's is, book. The, I will tell you, this is pre-Steve Harvey. <laughs> oh, okay. Pre-Steve Harvey relationship guru. <sighs> um it's no different. It was like a lot of them eHarmony questions. I don't know uh, if you've yeah. ever done like the dating, the dating website. Yeah. Years ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and eHarmony would make you fill out these. It's a 70-point personality <laughs> profile. <laughs> so it was It was a lot of shit like that. And I was like, all right. Dante, you I guess you're your tired of dealing site. with niggas and then finding out that they smoke or that they 
drink too much or mm. whatever your deal breakers are, you're trying right. to ascertain what your floor is. Right. And do I meet the floor? All right. Well, no, I mean, I, I'm not, I, listen, I wouldn't do it again. Right, 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 right. Duncan, so you, would, you would write back your own uh, thing as just one question. Are you DTF? <laughs> and then you would type that 40 <laughs> times. <laughs> like like the shining. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you DTF? Yeah. Are you DTF? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Just in, in a real typewriter too. In real not type, even yeah, a, not even a word. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't cut and paste that a hundred times. I wrote it she over. She flipped and over. through the page. You sent her a whole manuscript. She flipped through the pages and it just said, Are you DTF? Are you DTF? <laughs> <laughs> Roy, why? Uh, what makes this this relationship different? Now, I mean, obviously, you're older, you're wiser, you're smarter. But uh, was there something about this particular relationship that seven years? I, I had a kid. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, even before the kid, I, mean, the, I think that you settle in the, prior to her. This I will, I will, I can give this time to, but I dated someone before her, months before, who had said some shit that, you know how you didn't even know something could piss you off the level at which it pissed you Absolutely. off? Absolutely. Because it had Absolutely. just never, it had never manifested itself in a relationship before. Mm. Okay. And yeah. And mind you, most relationships prior to this was either me cheating or growing apart. Like it mm. wasn't like some where I felt wronged. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It was just, oh, damn, I'm moving to L.A. You in Birmingham. I'm broke. I can't afford to be long mm. distance. Right. All right, Dan. Ah, All right, like, Dan. No, <laughs> that's that's hey, Dan. The, you know, that's and you that's wrote that in a house. letter, which is weird. <laughs> yeah. In a handwritten letter versus you cheated on me. Get the fuck out of my life. That's more right. clean. Right. But then this one, it was just a casual fucking afternoon. And granted, there, there was already like strike one, strike two between she and I. But it wasn't anything egregious that we should break up over. It was a random day. And you know, sometimes you have those days, bro, where it's three cities in one day. I was mm. doing a bunch of college runs. Right, right. So you land in one city, you do a day show, you drive to the next city, you do the night show, you mm. get in the car and drive to another city so that you're in place for morning radio right. for your weekend gigs right. that start so, the next day. Right, right. Three cities, one day. It's not frequent, but it's not an uncommon thing to happen. Yeah, and it ain't fun. It ain't fun. <laughs> ain't fun. Yeah. But it's essential at that mile marker in your career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She mumbled, you doing too much. Mm. And I am i don't know what the fuck clicked in my head, bro, right. but I was done. Yeah. I was done. This, There is no need for a discussion. Right. Because if you don't understand hustle, yeah, and me trying to go get it, because it's only gonna get worse. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even doing shit for real with my career yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm doing too much. Yeah, you gotta go. Yeah, you gotta go. I'm All sorry. Right, this ain't gonna work. All right then. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> so All right. you go from that to meeting a woman who goes. Yeah, I have a perfectly great cush job in D.C. working for the government and it's everything that everyone dreams for and I'm going to quit it and I'm going to move to another city and start my own company. This is our first conversation. Right. And so I'm like, oh, this bitch crazy. She's right, thinking, right. she's insane. This is right. perfect. Right, right. This is perfect. This is perfect because she's, she's on my level. Yeah, you under. I will never have to explain hustle to you. Right. You get At it. No point in our relationship have I ever had to explain why I gotta go do something. If anything, yeah. it's go do it, baby. Mm -hmm. And that's what get you need, man. Yeah. And yeah. like that, once you have that level of focus, knowing that you have that foundation at the crib, that shit is it's reassuring. It's good. I'm not gonna sit here and say that dating one person is for everybody, but you know, it 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 the 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 construct works for me.
Yeah, well, I would I would say too that if you and and Harry's went through this where you if you get a roster, if you yeah. do a roster, you're responsible for the roster. Like you could you can like you can like dogs all you want, but that don't mean you want to have five of them. You got to walk five of them. Mm. You got to feed five of them. You yeah. got to make sure the shots are there. Like if you got five girls, even the even and I've said even this casuals. Too, I've said this to dudes casuals, who who do not believe me. I was like, look, if you want to, I'll, I'll teach you the game that you can you can be the D-Ray or Bill Bellamy. You can you, I'll teach you old how to Bill do that. Bellamy. Let me let me also put that. That's all Bill Bellamy. Bill, yeah. Bill is on married and children yeah. and yeah, Bill yeah. is a straight up dude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but we, day, we, quite the but, coxman. Yeah. When he. When he I, when he had his um he, when he had his his hair when his hair was beautiful when he used to go up the jail <laughs> the jail on the, the jail top. fade he had the only jail <laughs> fade the, the G E L jail yeah. um Bill though Bill understands how to use charisma as a weapon on stage though I know that's a separate conversation for another yeah, yeah. day but he no, no, understands no. how to engage women through his act yes uh, women go see bill bellamy and they feel heard mm. yeah. and that really? opens people up to laugh and it, i don't know if you've watched some of his shit just in the I, last five recently. to ten years yeah. oh bro yeah uh crazy sexy dirty if i'm not mistaken that was his last project uh-huh. i think 2016 if yeah you want to double check it okay um but it's He's talking to women uh-huh. and niggas are just there uh-huh. because the women are there. And then right. we laugh too. Like it's uh-huh. just Yeah, 2012, uh, yeah, crazy, sexy, dirty. Okay. So <clears throat> that that hour was very much geared at women and letting women know, ladies, I hear you. Here's <clears throat> this, here's that, here's why guys do this. And it wasn't like mansplaining on some dumb shit either. And that's like it wasn't like you were as a dude. It's not like you're watching Bill Bellamy go. This motherfucker just kicking to these motherfucking chicken trying just, to get, yeah. just trying to get some pussy from the stage. Fuck yeah. that. Like it right. was. It never felt like that. But well, he also was a dude. He never. He never had to really. You know what I'm saying? It's not like he was doing without. So it it al- it allows you to be honest about what's really going on when you're not when you're not when you don't have an objective you don't feel like you're walking on eggshells you know you, when you don't have an objective i mean bill always was never had a problem getting ladies so for him to kind of make a decision to not or to 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 be honest about some real shit allows you to do so it the problem is when you have an objective when there's an object, well, here's what I wanted to ask you. Do you think that that was purposeful or do you think that that just is how his comedy and the art kind of came out of him, that this was something that he wanted to say and it just developed in that way? Or do you think it was purposeful? I think it developed in that way. I don't think anything about Bill Bellamy is manufactured. He's just uh-huh. a naturally charismatic guy. Yeah. Like he is yeah. that he is he is what that it factor, like they say. The dude that everybody, you want to be the man that every nigga wants to hang out with, Mm -hmm. have a drink with, and you want to be the man that every woman wants to fuck. Yeah, yeah. And Bill is that guy. Yeah. So that comes through naturally, you know, on stage. I mean, even with his... um, Even with his live show for a while, like, I know they were, like, they hand out roses and shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, him and... um, delay i know ali sadiq was with him for a while yeah um, we're doing the teddy pendergrass comedy show <laughs> <laughs> all ladies in the audience chocolates. come on up here and get your rose baby and <laughs> women trust him and they come get it because it's bill bellamy but yeah. if a nigga like me said come get a rose he'd be like, Ugh, nigga, what the fuck? <laughs> what you what trying you, to do <laughs> what you trying to, i don't know about that with, at a Bill Bellamy show, it's a fucking line of people waiting. Are we going to get it? Like they waiting to talk to Santa Claus really? in the middle of a fucking comedy show. Really? Bro, I ain't, never seen, I ain't never seen no shit like that. Like, Cat... But Cat isn't as specific to women, and his entire act isn't arced around that. D-Ray has a way of breaking down relationships that I think mm-hmm. endears women. Corey Holcomb... 
though I think women may start out during his set reluctant. Yeah. Uh, mm, I don't know if anyone would, would describe it as describe it as endearing when Corey Hulk. You know, it's at honest first. though. Yeah, it's it is honest, but, and you but it just ain't endearing. Gotta, it's it's honest. Check it. You, you don't fuck with it off the rip, but by, right, but, right, right. but it's a sixty minute it's, show, and yeah, Corey yeah. know that. He talks about yeah. when you work your pussy to the point where you get vaginal rejuvenation surgery. That's he goes. That's when you work your pussy so hard. You got to get a surgery, get some memory foam <laughs> to restructure. <laughs> you know, uh, I ain't got to tell you about Patrice. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of different, but that's charisma and honesty in itself is also a form of charisma. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. It doesn't just, it doesn't pertain just to the stage either because especially with my girl now, now that I'm, I'm done with, she was the girl after the roster. She survived the roster. She was on the roster and then I let everybody else go and I just didn't sign any more people up. And then she was the last one left because she's just great. But the honesty is the thing that turns her on because she knows when she asks me a question that I'm not lying her and it's not always comfortable. It's not nice. It's not nice to the point where she'll go, She'll ask a question and go, Oof. never mind. She's she, she's like a lawyer with will withdraw her own question. She goes, you know what? I don't want to know the answer to that. I don't want to yeah. know the answer to that. But yeah. she at the end of the day, she loves it. She respects me for it because yeah. I'm not going to bullshit her on it. And it's not always comfortable, but that's what she loves because she knows that those are my standards. Well, you know, do you know the dynamic? As well, the dynamic of that is that, look, uh, you know, I, 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 trust is something. There's nothing more attractive than trust. Right. If you got to do with a six pack, but he's a liar, he's untrustworthy. It even if he got the cum gutters, you know, the 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 the, the above the jeans, you know, the low fit jeans where he got the the I do the not. ab I do not the know. ab muscle. You're talking about. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it, I'm a, it, unfamiliar. It, a yeah, dude, a dude who is dishonest is because dishonesty also means a lack of safety. If you're dishonest, she can't be safe. Safe, unsafe is always dangerous and dangerous is not attractive. Now, we're not talking about yeah. safe, but adventurous. You know what I mean? Like, you know, maybe like, you know, well, what's, what are we going to do? Are we going to fuck in the bathroom? Maybe maybe we'll, maybe we'll fuck on the hood. Of the well, I'm talking about dangerous. Like this dude is a liar. And because he's a liar, um, I can't trust him. I can't relax because I don't feel safe around him. And that is the 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 thing. Now, say now, honesty, the thing about honesty is honesty doesn't necessarily mean that you like it. It just means it's the truth and it can be it can be verified. It's base level, but it's base level of all right, I trust the information that is presented in front exactly. of me. Exactly. Exactly. And I can process it with effective data. Yeah. Yeah. Which and is it, what it, most women are denied from men. Most of the time. Especially yeah. if they like you. I you know, if if you know like why do men lie? I'm like, because they like you. Because if you get a yeah. you get an ugly chick with an eye on the middle of the forehead, you'd be like, but you'd be like, where are you going? I'm going home to my wife. And she go, I can't believe you would say that, bitch. You got an eye in the middle of your forehead. I'm, it's I'm honest. Truth. I can be honest with you because I don't care. Nobody lies to somebody that they don't care about, that they don't see as some value. It's They're a trying sign to hide. Respect. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Lie is the first sign of respect. <laughs> um, yo, let's um let's plug whatever you want to plug, and then we're gonna go behind the scenes for a few minutes. You got a little time? Yeah, yeah, we good, we good, man. Uh the special is Imperfect Messenger. Um nice. it's streaming on the Comedy Central website, Paramount Plus, January 19th. Um, it's so good, right? It's find it, it, it somewhere it, in bootlegged, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> some third world country has gotten a hold it's of got it. It's got a copy. And I'm fine with that. I want the exposure. I already got my money. So I yeah. don't care about and Roy, no, is, Roy is hilarious. <laughs> oh, I mean, Roy, I have to say this. I, I, I want to give you this compliment. You are effortlessly funny. Like, just effortlessly funny. I don't know if you understand what I mean by that in terms of a in terms of a comment, a, a, com, a, com, a compliment to your comedy. Just Effort just easy, that, easy like a Sunday morning, and always poignant and funny. Come, I, I just, I, I really enjoy you, man. I really I'm enjoy you. Thank you, bro. 
appreciate you. Harry, talk Trust to me. me. Thank you. Uh, you could go to all my stuff at Harry Turjanian uh, on all the social media stuff. But more importantly, uh, follow us over to Man School, uh, patreon.com slash manschool202, where we do the bonus content and stuff. And uh, your support helps us keep this thing rolling. Yo, everything with me, Google me, bitch. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know uh, what it is, <laughs> and, uh, one on one consultation, Dante Nero.com. Click on consult. You can talk to me directly if you need to. GYB, we get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all, man. Follow us on the Patreon. Appreciate it. We are out.